to the steepest climb in suburban Australia, as it's commonly known. This is, uh, we're going up Norton Summit at the moment, we're just going to turn onto Woodlands Way, um, and it's an absolutely horrible climb. I believe the start of it is like coach drive or something, and then you go on to Woodlands Way. Um, but anyway, it's absolutely horrible climb. It averages maybe only 12% or something for a couple kilometres, but it has some real steep ramps. It has four horrible kickers that sort of go all up to 20%. Um, it was absolutely disgusting climb. Uh, one of the worst I've ever done, to be honest. Um, I just like, I don't know. I just did, just just felt so bad. I mean, number one, my gearing is rubbish. You probably already heard me in some of my other videos ranting about my gearing, but I only have a thirty six twenty eight, and it's just not big enough, um, which is just super annoying because it means on these the twenty percent ramps, I literally have to just like zigzag across the road because there's no other way I can get up. Um, but anyway. That is that is life. Um, when I finally get some gearing, um, I'll be able to go up a, a little bit more comfortably. Like if I was going full gas, I'd still be struggling massively on those real steep ramps. Because even full gas, like you're not going that fast. Uh, so you can see here, we're just chilling at the at the bottom, not really going very hard. Cadence is super low already, just because I don't know. Because I guess we're doing like 130 watts or whatever, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, it's a real real nice climb. You can see at the moment, it looks looks pretty chill. It looks pretty chill indeed. Uh, but it really ramps up. The person who's the KOM is Damien House, and he's got like a minute and a half of everyone else. Um, and I think it's Anthony, and then Harley, Jim Ryder, and then I'm not sure who else is there. Dan's probably top ten, he normally normally is. But I need to have a go at this and uh, see. It's not the best pa best climb to put like the most consistent power out, because it's uh, rather up and down. Um, it's not It's not very steep. Like, it is steep, but not, not consistently steep. Um, it's just really variable, which means trying to hold, like, 360 watts or whatever for this for this time period would be quite hard because you can see already there was parts that were really flat and then we're going up to 10%. And, like, yeah, if you're good at holding power and you're an experienced rider, then, yeah, it's not too hard to hold power for that um, when it changes. But I generally find it a bit harder to hold power like that. I normally can... I normally do better than other people because I can sort of, I'm happy to explode and like sort of hit a bit higher watts here and then recover on the flatter parts, but I'm, I don't think I'm comfortable just to like hit solid, sort of power the whole way up and just try and hold the consistent wattage, which is what you'd want if you were trying to hit your best, best numbers. Um, but you can see here already we're up to 15%. Um, and this is like the first, the first part of the kicker and it's not that bad. Like it's, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's super easy, but like you can, you can make it up. You can see here we're not doing anything crazy at all, um, but this road doesn't really go anywhere, which is nice because it means there's no traffic. And when you're on the limit, it's pretty good when there's when there's no traffic around and nothing to really to like distract you. So you can pretty much ride wherever you want. Um, you can see I'm doing absolutely shocking out the sail technique. I'm sorry already. There's going to be loads of shake camera shaking because it was I I couldn't really sit in the saddle and try and get up these climbs. There's just absolutely no way it was going to happen. Um, so my my tips for this climb would just be go hit it a little bit harder on the climb, on the steep parts, sorry, on the climb, on the steep parts. Uh, not too crazy, but just like a little bit above. Maybe like go up to 110% of your, your threshold maybe, because they're only like two or three minutes. And then just drop down into like a, a steady pace, maybe 80 to 70%. Um, and then basically just keep doing that up these, up these kickers. Uh, gearing, I'd recommend, uh, just depends on your fitness. For me, I think um, a 34, 32 would have been good. No, I think... A one to one, so thirty four, thirty four would have been good for me up this climb. Obviously, like I don't do this climb that often, and it, it's a bit annoying having that wider cassette. But if you're riding these roads the whole time, I definitely would invest in getting a, a thirty six probably on the back, so I'd have a thirty six, thirty six. So one to one. Obviously, if you're slower, you need bigger gearing, and if you're faster, you need less gearing. Um, but it also depends, like if you if you enjoy fifty cadence, which I've I've yet to find anyone who does enjoy fifty cadence, and yeah, obviously you don't need gears, but um for me I, I can get by at lower cadences, but I prefer spinning at ninety to hundred. Um so I find like on one off efforts, I already said this, but on one off efforts it doesn't matter that much. It's more when you're just trying to do this. Like we would this is the second last climb or third last climb and I, my calves are really hurting now because I just wasn't used to Oh, sorry, I just, just like wasn't used to this low cadence stuff, and I was literally doing low cadence the whole day. So you see here, like it starts to flatten off, and this is what I mean. Like it, in between each kicker, it's not that steep. It's just that the combination of the kickers all together just makes it incredibly horrible. Uh, because yeah, it's just like the last one is just steep for quite a long time as well. Like 
probably four or five hundred meters it's sort of 15 to 25 percent and that's just really really brutal so you can see here we now turn onto Woodlands Way which is this climb here you start on Coach Drive um, and that's I think is the full full segment um, which is good and you can see here like again it's it's not super steep like it's only eight um, percent which is which is pretty cash but it's just the kickers are just they're just mind-blowingly horrible to do um, and I think a lot of people end up walking this climb I think just because it's so steep but it's a real it's a real classic in Adelaide um, so if you are in Adelaide you've got to give it a go you have to just because it is one of the it's like it's just like Norton Summit or something like that it's one of those climbs that like if you're in Adelaide you've got to do um, probably like Corkscrew like Green Hill you've got to just do Kensington Road you've got to do some of these super steep climbs um, and popular climbs I, I'm not sure how many people have actually done the segment probably not that many because most people probably like make it up halfway and then they're like nah this is too de this is too tiring I'm not doing this but again 10% like it just this bit the thing is it, it, generally I find this climb the first one wasn't too bad the second one was probably the easiest it, it doesn't really get that steep and then the last the third one is hard but not not impossible and then the fourth one is just yeah that's again I almost thought I was gonna I was gonna have to walk because it was just like it just wasn't comfortable doing that lower cadence and like it really did get down uh, but that's the thing with climbing like in reality is that you can pretty much climb anything up to probably like 30 35 percent just by having the gears like obviously when you get over 30 percent you actually need quite a lot of power just to keep the bike going forward but on these climbs like you don't need that much power just to keep the bike going forward like at six seven k's an hour it's quite it's not easy but it's not hard just to like keep cycling up uh it's just the gear so if you had a mountain bike gear you probably wouldn't even find this climb like that hard like obviously you it might take you a lot it will take you a lot longer but it wouldn't be it wouldn't seem super difficult it's just when you have the road bike gearing or the ridiculous gearing that i have um it's just not really suitable for these climbs um or or just these length of climbs, I'd say. Like, if it was just one of them, then it'd be fine because you can just grind for like two, three minutes and it's fine. But when it's such a long climb or you've done such a long combination of climbs, that's when you're just like, meh, I want easier gears. Um, but again, it, the other thing with this climb is it's really annoying is that there's no like switchbacks or anything. It's just like straight up. So you actually have no idea of the progress you're making. Because you know, like when, when you have a switchback, it's really nice because you like go long and then you can look down and be like, yeah, look, I'm gaining loads of elevation. Even when it's like 5%, it looks like you're gaining loads and loads of elevation. But here, there's no way of telling because you're not really going to look behind you. You just look straight forward and it's just, just pretty horrible, to be honest. Like, because you just see the steep walls and then that's it. You don't see anything else. Um, and you can see Dan to the left of me, I think he, um, he was having a lot easier time because he just had more proper gearing. Um, but I think, yeah, it was, it's a very nice climb actually. I'd really like to go full gas on it, but I think if you're going to pace this for a full gas effort, like I was saying before, you really need to like, well, hold a high wattage the whole time, but just sort of punch these slightly steeper sections, mainly just to like save your legs a bit more. It sounds a bit counterintuitive, but if you sort of punch a bit higher, um, wattage on these parts obviously your cadence doesn't get as low because look I'm at like 45 cadence or whatever but obviously when you're going full gas it'll probably be more like 65 70 but if you push a little bit harder you might be able to get you might have to go up to 400 watts but you'll be able to go at like 90 cadence which doesn't always seem as bad as doing like 350 at 80 cadence or 75 cadence or whatever it will be um, so sometimes that's that's a good good tactic and also obviously you gain more time if you go harder on the steepest parts and then less less hard on the flatter parts um, obviously to a degree like you can't do an all-out sprint and then coast to like 100 watts in between like obviously that's not going to be as fast as holding consistent power the whole time but I think um, if you hold consistent power the whole time you probably wouldn't go as fast as if you held slightly higher power on the steeper parts because obviously there's less air resistance so you go faster um, so yeah that's that's my top top tip like I would do that a lot of people just say even pacing the whole time but I just I don't really agree with that that much just because Obviously, on a physiological perspective, it makes sense to try and hold even even power the whole time because it is easy on your body. But you have to remember that, like on some of the steep parts, like if you you'll just go so much slower. Um, so here, like this is this is where you could do a little bit of recovery because it's only well, it's only eight percent. Like that's still relatively steep, but it doesn't seem nearly as steep. Um, but you can see here, just because we're going cash, this is where like you we 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 probably lost. 
like a lot of time, maybe even a minute to two minutes. I think it took us like 16 minutes altogether, literally just by going so slow up these parts because the rest of it were like, we did not, not incredible power, but we did like all right power. But it's just on, on these parts, we were just like, nah. Like, we just rode enough so we could get up, but we didn't ride, like, and sort of, like, try and go faster than we had to. So it was like, we just responded to the gradient. So the gradient eased out, we'd go slower. If the gradient was, like, higher, we'd probably go the same speed, maybe a little bit slower, but just increase the power. So you can see, again, this is the third kicker, and Dan was like, oh, yeah, this is the last one, mate. And I was like, oh, really? But I was sort of, like, in the back of my mind being like, nah, it might not be, because... I remember I descended this with Harley, like, and I remember there was a lot of kickers, and I remember the the last, the first one we got to was super steep, so I was like, oh, I'm I'm not sure about that, um, but you can see it's getting up to fifteen percent again, um, which in itself, like, it's not it's not crazy steep. Um, you can sort of see the houses on the left. Like, here's quite a good angle. You can sort of see how steep it is because um, you can see the houses. Often, when there's no houses or or anything that's level, it's quite hard to tell how steep it is. But you can see like it's quite steep, but it doesn't really get to the point where you're like ridiculous like I'd say only when it gets over like sort of 20% that's when you're like wow that looks like almost vertical but when it's like 15% it doesn't look too bad um really it just sort of looks quite steep but you don't look too bad like it doesn't look too crazy like oh I could never get up that and you can get again see my little hands coming forward that means I'm on the hoods trying to just get just I don't know I, I do this really weird thing where like you know the like the arrow position on the hoods where you have like your elbows bent on the on the lever um Sorry, elbows bent on the lever. What am I talking about? Where you try and get your elbows like 90, 90 degrees to your forearms. So like that sort of aero position on the hoods as people call it. Um, I find like that is what I really like when I'm climbing. I've seen Nibley do it a bit before as well. Um, just something he does. Obviously, he's normally climbing way faster, so it's actually an aero thing. But I just find it relatively comfortable when you're just like, when you're just trying to like, you know, this is the gear I'm on and I just need to drive as hard as possible. I sometimes find it just quite comfortable to get in that position and just absolutely fly. Um, well, obviously you're not flying on this, but you know what I mean? Like you just put it, put your hands in that position and just drive as far as hard as you can and just sort of concentrate on the effort. I find that is relatively comfortable for me and better than just having your ha hands on the hoods like usual. Um, but it's weird, I often prefer that. Prefer doing like the aero position on the steep stuff, which obviously makes zero sense. But anyway, that, that is how I am. And here is the last one. Oh god, it almost killed me. This is, this is, this is just a disgusting, um, disgusting part. Uh, but the gradient doesn't really like knock back that much. Like, I think the lowest it sort of gets to is like 6% after the first, like when you actually get onto Woodlands, um, Woodlands Way official. Like the coach drive bit, yeah, there's a little bit where it's like 3-4%. Um, but that's more like an aperitif to the main climb. Uh, but this is, yeah, this is where it starts apart. You can already see the cadence is, like, below 50, um, and it's weird, like, you sort of get used to it, because I, I, I was, like, watching this, and, like, when I started, my cadence was, like, just 65, but obviously that, that probably felt, for me at the time, like, spinning, because I had such a low cadence otherwise, but, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's brutal, you just have to do it, but that's the funny thing when pro riders, like, they got this stuff, and let's say they're, they're just in the group hetto, so they're not, they're not going that hard. And they'll have a 39.28. Like, obviously, they'll be putting out more power than me. But actually, yeah, they're probably doing, like, four, four and a half, maybe five watts per kilo up these climbs, like, in the Basque country. Um, and they are really struggling, like, because they just don't have the gearing. If you think, like, here, up at 17% gradient, I'm doing, well, 4.8, 4 4.9 4 watts per kilo, and I'm doing 40 cadence, and you think... They're not, pro like, the people in the group header aren't going that much faster. Maybe they're going a little bit faster, but then they have a 39.28, which you're just like, oh my god. Like, imagine, like, you've done your turn, you've driven the leaders into the bottom of the climb, and then you just have to get up this, and it must just be horrible. Um, like, obviously, the per their perceived exertion is far less, so if they have a threshold of 400 watts, and they're doing, I don't know, 350 at 5 watts per kilo or so, whatever. Obviously, that's not as different to me doing my threshold at... 40 cadence, but even so, it's, it's pretty bad, and here is, this is where, I, look, I start weaving across the road, it gets up to 19%, so sometimes my gradient, I swung to Dan, my gradient probably won't be as high as it necessarily is, because when it gets super steep, I actually have to just weave across the road, um, the weaving, I, I quite enjoy it, but I wouldn't really recommend it, I just recommend getting easier gears, but if, if you do have to, you sort of just flick the handlebars, I'm not the best at it, but you, the whole idea is basically, you just, by increasing the distance, you decrease the um the gradient so basically it's like doing hairpins up a, up a climb basically um and the best thing to do is just when you get to the end when you get to like the when you're going to turn if you flip the handlebars really quickly you can gain a little bit of speed and if you do it right 
you can actually end up gaining quite a lot of speed, uh, and it's quite it's quite a good tactic to do, um, especially if you're what if you have no gears left um, and you just want to save your legs. And I, I do quite quite I find it relatively effective. Like I haven't really done it that much before. I remember trying to do it on the Patabo, but that just didn't work because there were cobbles and stuff. But up up here on like a, a concrete right uh, a concrete road, uh, it's actually generally quite quite good and effective to do. So we're just coming towards the end. I don't think I have the whole segment here, uh, but it basically after this it's just like boring. Just well not boring. It's like just ten percent to the end. Um, but anyway, here we go. We're coming towards the end of the video. Cheers for watching. Is this the steepest climb in suburban Australia? I think it probably is, but I haven't really been to any other cities in Australia, so I have no idea. But it's a, an incredibly steep climb nonetheless. So cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.